rising sea levels, combined with extreme weather, would have on the greater Vancouver area. According to a recent UN report, future sea levels could rise as much as 60 centimeters from global warming in future decades. This would flood large areas of greater Vancouver, including its international airport built adjoining the Pacific. A series of changing weather conditions has converged to produce the area's so-called perfect storm. First, BC South Coast now experiences wild swings in weather, from very heavy snow dumps to extremely warm weather almost overnight. Late winter and early spring precipitation now falls as heavy rain instead of additional snow, causing more spring runoffs as snow melts faster. And warmer winter weather increases the likelihood that floodwaters will roar down the Fraser River from the mountains. The perfect storm will likely occur here, where the Fraser River meets the Pacific. Protected by miles of dikes, this region could become Vancouver's litmus test for climate change. To give you a sense of the kind of infrastructure we have, we have uh, about 620 kilometers of a drainage system. We have 38 pump stations around the island, and we have some internal to the island to help move the water to the edge of the island. And our pump stations uh, vary in size depending on the type of land use. You know, the delta of any great river isn't a vibrant living thing that's constantly moving. I mean, that's the nature of a delta. And yet what we're seeing is this, these dike systems are an attempt to freeze the delta, right? To keep it from moving so that we can exploit that area. What I think we realized years ago is that we have to continue to move ahead and continue to look ahead and not look back to the to past for all of the answers. We need to continue to move ahead. This is an animation that we did of uh, one part of the dike system showing the sea level rising under normal current conditions to what we would call a normal high tide situation. Plenty of dike left here for protection. But if we move into time, we go to 2050 under those same storm surge conditions, we see by the end of the century, it's actually at the top of the dike. We've lost the protection that the engineers want to have. And so the only way to you know, prevent that is to raise the dike. In the past, those kinds of efforts to improve or strengthen dikes have been uh, not popular. Uh, it impacts farming, it impacts uh, you know, some of the ecosystems, the drainage systems, so it's not uh, necessarily easy or simple to just sort of adapt by raising the dike. Despite the potential for disaster, an incredible $30 billion worth of new development has been approved, including expansion of the airport adjoining the Richmond Dikes. Between 2004 and 2005, housing starts in the region increased 40%, and the total value of new building construction in 2005 alone hit $500 million. Here in Richmond, some insurance companies won't insure against floods. They reason that if people build their homes on a floodplain, then at some point their houses will be flooded. Why then do people keep building here? You know, we've learned from Mississippi, the Mississippi River, that the Delta is kind of like a living, a living entity that's constantly shifting. And you wonder, should we be building cities in an area like this, uh, with the risks that go with the changes? Well, I think in the West Coast, and certainly in, in Richmond, we accept the risk. Anywhere in Canada or anywhere in the world, there's a risk. It might be tornadoes in uh, Ontario or Winnipeg, or ice storms in Ontario, or uh, wind storms in, uh, in Nova Scotia, and so on. So everywhere there's a risk. And uh, we accept those risks and manage to it. We like uh, this area because of the climate. It's a gateway to the... Uh, 
to Asia. We have uh, an airport, we have good resources, lumber, fishing, mining and so on. We have a very high tech industry, so people come for the climate and the jobs. So those are the draw factors. I know right now the GVRD region is about 2 million people. The projections to 2031 are that it'll go to about 3 million. With a new $2 billion rapid transit line connecting the airport to Vancouver, and as one of the host sites for the 2010 Winter Olympics, Richmond is depending on its dikes to safeguard the public. I talked to critics who, despite these and other efforts, remain skeptical. You know, my experience is that the, the Richmond uh, Council here is very, very progressive in that they're taking these threats very seriously. Yeah, and, and we've, I know that we've had conversations about this uh, and that they are uh, interested in uh, retaining the value of Richmond as an urban center. And so will they be investing? I, I suspect they will. The combination of rising sea level and then failure of the dikes in the event of an earthquake is a scenario I see at the time where they would rethink whether Richmond should be where it is. They've not been willing to take that next step that says, we developed here, it was a mistake. We'll go and develop somewhere that's safer. You know, I've always made the point that it, foresight, our ability to look ahead, was the great strategy for our species' survival, to avoid dangers, to exploit opportunities. And yet, when you get into urban s settings like this, and you try to make the, the argument, look, climate change is coming, we better do this, then you find there are all kinds of barriers that are really perceptual barriers, rather than uh, anything scientific or factual. Uh, I wish I could share your optimism and our ability to have foresight. Uh, my fear is that we learn lessons the hard way, and that even though a few people will have the foresight to warn people about the dangers ahead, what we will actually do is say, oh, you know, for example, the oven is hot, don't put your hand on it. Really? Is it hot? <laughs> Let me touch, right? And I think until we touch and burn ourselves, we don't tend to learn those lessons. And it's part of the way the human system works. Whatever scenario unfolds, frontline health workers will have to ensure adequate medical care can be provided and maintained. So let's suppose that, uh, that you do get an extreme uh, storm or that there's a, a, a heavy flood from high melting uh, in the mountains. The dikes are breached. Then what kind of a, a challenge does that confront you with? Well, that's a major challenge for not just for healthcare, but for the community in a more general sense. For our clients and our residents, we would be looking at trying to find alternate arrangements where they could be relocated to another facility, but that we are able to maintain the appropriate level of care, and that includes not just moving them to the right facility, but also moving um, all their logistical requirements. So, I mean, residents or patients that are on dialysis or have special equipment and requirements, those needs need to be met. And we also need to think about making sure that we're redeploying our staff in a way that we can maintain that level of care and we aren't putting too much of a burden on the receiving facilities that are accepting our, our at-risk clients and these patients. And what about uh, long-term, after the flood recedes, recedes are, there, are there health issues that come out of uh, what you're left with afterwards? Yeah, recovery issues are always a big deal and for healthcare as well. Um, it's, it's, again, it's just like any other facility or business where the floodwaters go away, you can't just move back into the facility again. I mean, you have to rip out walls and rip out floors and get rid of any mold and, you know, make sure that the, everything is built to code again, and, and that takes some time. As in Halifax, the potential for multiple events in Greater Vancouver is real. Much of the region lies over a seismic fault, an earthquake combined with a large storm surge caused by global warming, could completely overwhelm emergency services. But is anyone listening? How well